How's it going guys? So the end of the year is approaching, it's December of 2018 and I just wanted to do a video just describing the state of my watch collection at the end of this year. You know I started this channel in the spring of this year and I think it's been going really well. I really appreciate all the views um, and comments, keep them coming. And I'll also just wrap up by maybe talking a little bit about plans for future years for this channel. So I'm going to start with sports watches or dive watches. They are my first love, you could say. And then I'll move into my pilot watches and then field slash dress watches. And then I'll just wrap it up with my beater watch that I wear every day. And uh, let me kick things off with my latest purchase, actually. And it's this uh, Zelos Swordfish 300 meter diver. And this watch just has some amazing specs, beautiful sunburst blue dial, um, nice ceramic bezel that's fully loomed, and an amazing stock bracelet. And this watch also houses the Seiko NH35 uh, movement, and anecdotally it's picking up about 5 seconds a day, which is on par with other Seikos I've seen in the past. So it's a really great watch and a really good micro brand. Check out Zelos if you get a chance. Okay, let's uh, move into my diving lineup here. And I'll start with my first Swiss watch purchase and probably the pinnacle of my collection. And that is my good old Glycine Combat Sub. And this watch is just so versatile. Um, I mean, it is a 200 meter diver, um, you know, great visibility, great dial. But I also love the case design. It's so thin and, and very comfortable on wrist. It slips under a cuff no problem. And I have it on this really, really nice Super Oyster bracelet that I purchased from Strapcode that I think um, complements it really well. So, I mean, this watch is definitely staying in my collection. It's very versatile and just an amazing piece. The next watch I'll, I'll discuss um, it's another popular one in the watch enthusiast community, and that is, of course, the Steinhardt Ocean One. This is the Red Vintage Edition, um, and this is a slight homage to a Rolex Sea Dweller, but very solid, um, similar to the Glycine, which I don't think I mentioned, but it runs the ETA 2824-2 movement, um, so... It's a great Swiss workhorse movement. This guy's 300 meters water resistant um, and really just nicely finished. I like um, how grippy the bezel is, the nice signed crown. Um, it's got some heft to it and I really enjoy it on its stock bracelet, uh, which is really nice. So this is a really great piece, especially if you're trying to pick up something that resembles a Rolex Submariner or Sea Dweller. Um, the next watch I'm going to discuss, it's a micro brand out of Germany, and that is Mark and & Sons. And this watch is, uh, you can kind of say, it's a slightly similar to the Steinhardt. Um, it, it borrows a lot of cues from a, a Rolex Submariner. But it's just a really well-specced watch, similar to the Zelos too. Um, you know, you have this really nice white dial um, with that really nice orange minute hand for contrast. And then you have a nice blue ceramic bezel that's also fully loomed, similar to the Zelos. And uh, this either houses the Miyota 9015 or the Seiko NH35 as well. Um, on the website, it does mention the Seiko movement, but the, uh, the seller I bought this from insisted that it was the Miyota 9015. Either way, though, it runs really well. Um, it's a bit more of a hefty watch. It's about just over 15 millimeters thick. It's almost very Tudor Black Bay-ish with respect to the case height. And also if you look at the case back, it's similar. You know, you've got that fluted pattern around the case back like you see on Tudors and some Rolexes. And uh, I actually have this on a custom blue rubber strap. Um, that I just think it really helps that bezel, that blue bezel pop. But great micro brand. Check out the website if you get a chance to. You're getting a lot of value for the money here. All 
All right, and now I'm going to transition into my Seiko lineup, um, which, I mean, to nobody's surprise, does dominate a lot of the dive watch market. I mean, this is an ISO certified diver. This is the Seiko Turtle with the Pepsi bezel. And the reason I went with this over a more conventional Seiko, like the SKX 009, is mainly to do with the movement. This houses the Seiko 4R36 movement, which you can hack and hand wind. Whereas the Seiko SKX and other Seiko 5s, they tend to run the uh, Seiko 7S caliber, which you have to do that Seiko shuffle to actually get it started. So I don't think it manually winds, I don't think it hacks either. But this is a very robust and great watch. Um, extremely legible. I mean, you get that Seiko Luma Bright technology. Um, and you get this really nice, comfortable case. It's got the coin cushion case. It makes it super comfortable on wrist. I have it on this custom silicone strap with red stitching that I think really helps complement the countdown portion um, from the 0 to 20 on the bezel here. So just a really solid pickup. Any of a Seiko Diver lineup you can't really, can't really go wrong with. And then I'll talk about the next Seiko watch that I have. It's a bit of a step up with respect to the movement and the case finish, finishing over the Turtle. And that is my Seiko Blumo right here. So it is part of a Sumo lineup, but you know, with the blue dial, they coined it the Blumo. Um, again, the main advantage with respect to the movement here is you're getting a 50 hour power reserve over closer to the 40 hours you got on the Turtle. It's the Seiko uh, 6R15, I believe. Um, it only has the date um, aperture instead of a day as well, but it adds to a symmetry of a dial. Again, very visible. Blue is my favorite color, and I just love that dark blue dial and the bezel as well. And then, you know, you are stepping off of case finishing. I mean, just look at those beautiful transitions, those lines along the case. And then you get this really nice signed crown, you know, really well gnarled. It's just an excellent, um, you know, Seiko watch. Both of the Seikos I mentioned are 200 meters water resistant. And uh, yeah, they're really, really visible. And they're just great everyday, no-nonsense sports watches. So now I'll move into um, the pilot watches that I own, and that's going to be in this other watch box here. Okay, and continuing with Seiko theme, I got the good old Seiko Flightmaster. And uh, this is just a really, really great solid watch. Um, it does have a quartz movement, I don't remember the caliber for the quartz movement, but it's super accurate, um, great power reserve. I, I haven't had to change the battery in over two years. So since I've owned it, essentially. Um, you know, very reminiscent of a Breitling Navitimer, or if you ignore all the other text and just look at the chronograph function, from a distance to me, it almost looks like a Omega Speedmaster, but I could be wrong there. Um, and I really just love, I mean, just the details. I mean, it's 200 meter water resistant because it's got a screw down crown and screw down pushers. And then when you deploy the pusher, just look at the sweep of a chronograph seconds hand, that nice yellow seconds hand. The way it sweeps, you would think it's an automatic, um, but it's not, it's quartz. Um, yeah, and again, just really accurate. The sizing of a swatch is great too. I, I think it's 42 millimeters, but it wears smaller. It has a really, really short lug to lug, and that just makes it really comfortable on wrist. And I've kept it with a stock bracelet. Um, some people don't really like the polished center links on this bracelet, but I don't know. I, I really enjoy it. It adds to the comfort, and I really like the sign Seiko clasp as well. So this is a really great pilot watch to have in any collection. And it's nice to have a nice quartz movement as well, you know, instead of having nothing but automatics. The next uh, pilot watch I have, I mean, this is a true German Flieger, and it's the Laco, I think this is the Attenberg, 42 millimeter. So it is the 42 millimeter case. 
it's just super legible and clean, no nonsense, no complications, but you get amazing visibility and I just love the loom on this. It's C3 loom throughout and it's on everything. It's on all the markers, indices and handset. And that includes that second hand that just is really long and touches the end of a chapter in which I love. You can get a really good read of time at a glance. And it's finished really well. It's all, um, it's all brushing, but a really nice crown, kind of like an onion style crown. And it even has a really nice display back, which I'll show you in a second. So that's the display back, guys. You know, it's the... Uh, it runs a Miyota 821, I believe, with 21 jewels. It doesn't hack or hand wind, but they decorated it kind of neat. Um, it's got, I don't know if you can call that Geneva stripes, because this is a German watch. Um, but it's there, and um, yeah, the rotor action is really, really good on it. Okay, and now I'm going to move into um, my, my field watch which I almost think passes for a dress watch because it's so versatile. It's probably the most versatile piece in my collection. Many of you know it by name. It is the Hamilton Khaki King. And the Hamilton Khaki lineup is just super affordable and just amazing quality with good Swiss, Swiss heritage. Um, but with this one, you have a champagne dial. You have the full day and date complication at the 12 o'clock. And you have it in the 40 millimeter package that's also super slim. And you get the really nice signed crown. And then you get this really gorgeous expedition back, sorry. <laughs> it houses the Hamilton H30, no, this is the H40 actually, movement, which is a modified ETA movement. Um, they slow down the vibrations per hour slightly so you can get an insane four, no, 80 hour power reserve on this guy. So, in my opinion, with this particular model of a Khaki King, um, I wear this on dressier occasions because of that beautiful champagne dial and just the other features that just make it finish so well. All right, and then um, I'll move into what I consider a true dress watch and probably the only quartz watch you would ever need. It's my Oceanus by Casio. So, for those of you who don't know, this is a quartz movement. It's the same tough movement they put in their G-Sock series. However, it's radio controlled, solar powered, never needs a battery. And you combine that with the fact that this is finished to almost a Grand Seiko standard with what Casio basically calls Zeratsu polishing um, uh, on different mirror-like finishes all around the watch case, like the bezel, um, you can see on the sides here along the crown and then even on the buckle you get some nice polished accents and all the while all this finishing work is done on a fully titanium watch which is a really impressive feat because titanium is not as easy to work with as stainless steel it is harder it's also super lightweight so this is a really compelling package because you're getting what I consider a dress watch with a, about a 41 millimeter size. I think it's about 10 millimeter high, so it does slide under the cuff. I mean, I just love the finishing, even on, on the dial. I love those applied markers with those beautiful chamfered edges. Um, and again, you're getting probably the most accurate quartz movement you can get within this price range. Um, and you only have to worry about a battery. And on top of that, all the benefits of titanium. Lightweight, anti-magnetic, scratch resistant, all that good stuff. So this is a really great dress watch to have in any collection. And it's a great quartz watch to have in any collection too. And now I'll just kind of close out with my everyday beater watch. And that's another Casio. It's the Tough Solar. It's not a G-Shock, but um, it does a job. It doesn't need to be a G-Shock. Why I like this one too is it's a combination of analog and digital. You do get physical hands and loom on the hour indices. And then you have a digital display at the six o'clock with all the other functions you would expect from a Casio, including illumination there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've put this thing through the ringer. I think I've done a video, I don't know if you guys have seen it, where I'm at the gym just throwing around some really heavy weight. 
uh, and this guy's on me through all my my weight weight training routines and, and running routines and sports. So, a really really great watch to have. Very affordable and extremely durable. So that about wraps up my uh, state of the watch collection for 2018, guys. Uh, moving forward, I do intend to uh, put out more content for next year. Um, again, big thanks to those of you who watched. Um, and I do have some reviews coming down the pipe. Uh, I, I will be purchasing another glycine watch for 2019. And I'll be purchasing my first mid-tier Swiss luxury watch. Which, when I say mid-tier, is between the fifteen to twenty-five hundred dollar range. And um, watch out for a review on that later. So, just thanks for for staying tuned, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video.